sometime in February, I was told by a friend that this was super serious and that we should all stay in our homes as much as possible. Fresno City College didn't close until March 16th. But even before then, I knew that it was going to close down. I knew that it was going to close and that it would be indefinite. I never thought the pandemic was going to be um, just a week or two off of school or work. I thought, I just remember being at a prayer breakfast with my parents and my mom talking to her friend and kind of like saying quietly, yeah, you know what I think? Brace for impact. And that number kept sticking in my head because we're seeing it on the news, COVID-19, COVID-19. And I wanted to redefine what 19 was in my mind and for others. And I thought, what if we bring 19 people together and we collaborate and we create and we do something that inspires us and hopefully inspires others to stay motivated. And last March, um, when we were suddenly told to go home and teach from home, um, I think as artists, we all realized that this was going to be a profound change for us. And change is hard. <laughs> so when I'm drowning out at sea. Honesty is invaluable in the Christian walk, but it's easy to forget and put on airs um, that aren't us, but a front we think others want to see. All your fingers and your waves crash down on me. We tend to be dishonest with God and ourselves. And there's a connective thread running from that into theater, um, into dance, all performance art. I'll recall their safety scheme. So we tend to be dishonest with our audiences and with our castmates and with ourselves um, throughout the project. I want to work on breaking through that um, artistic and personal <laughs> dishonesty. There's something inherently magical about pulling from within Oof. and putting something out. Because we all have different takes on how we observe the world and our reality, our environment.
I've been an instructor at Fresno City College for about 16 years. And obviously in those 16 years, I've never had to think so profoundly about how we continue to be artists, how we continue to stay motivated, how we connect through a virtual medium. Gabe, are you cool with starting to work on a song with Shelby? In my opinion, that would be the best outcome is to work on whatever project we'd be working on in person and having Shelby creatively direct everything. Shelby, are you comfortable with that? Yeah. I want you guys to stay at a distance, obviously, and don't go sing on each other or anything. Right, right. <laughs> Just keep your social distance while you do things and be mm. safe. How is my mental health? Like, I feel like mental health and spiritual health are inextricable from each other. My mental health has had its ups and downs. After statewide shutdown, it kind of went all over the place. Everything started swinging in terms of mood. That's just such bad lighting though. I feel so bad. Wow, I'm like not struggling with crippling anxiety like I used to. Like, and that was really huge at the start of quarantine also. Does that sound like it's viable? I really like it. I was placing my hope in a vessel that is literally dying slowly. Pandemic or not, this body is going out. I found I found myself at a an all-time high of lethargy and anxiety for the future. I'm still not sure what's what the game plan is for the future, for really anything. And I think I might be burnt out. My hope lies in... I, I truly believe that the collapse of everything will be the rebirth of something greater. This pandemic has been almost nothing but silver linings. Like, yeah, I miss performing a lot. I miss the community. I miss the energy of, of art. Something like that. I'm, well, I don't want to reuse that key. I'm going to do E. I think wanting to go back to normal is a form of stagnation. If we can't adapt and move on and find new ways, find the ways to cope and find the ways to thrive, then we're just sitting. Like I feel like just a lot of pandemic has been just shearing for me. Shearing away the excess and it hurts. Pruning. Like I'm a literal bush and my limbs are being cut off. But that's ultimately for the life of the plant, right? It's like clarity and it's like victorious. Take a deep breath. You know, it's almost worse than long decision. Indecision is a really uh, cool thing. You know, it's almost worse than a wrong decision, you know. Some people say. Yeah. But I'm I'm real indecisive and things just pass me by, you know. I should go read Proverbs. Um, no, and not necessarily, because Proverbs is... I think it's necessary. Hard. I don't think it's hard. Oh! Um, I think it's the Word of God. Um, no, I know, but there are people in a mental state that interpret the Word of God, you know, 
not the way the Lord is, you know? Well, yeah, you have to be careful. Um, um, and then, like, I have a friend, Teresa, and who's like, don't, she's like, we talked a long time ago, because I was entertaining about moving down to SoCal for, like, acting school or whatever the heck, and I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. She's like, whatever you do, Shelby, like, don't go there unless you feel like the Lord is absolutely telling you to go there. Be absolutely sure. I don't agree with that. All right. But she's she's the type of person that, like, hears from the Lord. Yeah, well, so. Yeah, I understand that. Some people have, like, the gift or what have you, you know? I think if it's something you want to do and as you go, the door is opening and you're being prayerful, then 